Well, this happened at the plant uh, plants locations at um, Puenta Saib and at Divas, where they mm -hmm. prepared everything, mm -hmm. uh, knowing months in advance that um, that the inspectors were coming. But uh, there was one plant, uh, the Batamandi plant, which the FDA has refused to certify because they found gross violations. I think pieces of glass and a refrigerator that was not uh, used properly and all kinds of contaminated things. So at least at some point, it was working well. What is remarkable for us in India is that while the FDA had um, pointed out many drugs that had to be uh, either recalled or banned or uh, action should be taken, reports were, were put in, uh, our own G.N. Singh, uh, who was the uh, head of the uh, Central Drugs Control Organization at that, during that period when Rand Baxi was getting all these notices from the FDA, he, was, he had never recalled a single drug in India, not even a, a, a suggestion to take some action to clean up either the plants or the drugs, not a single case uh, was uh, registered by G. N. Singh. And it's remarkable that uh, I think the question was raised once in parliament in India by a politician from the Congress party, Gulam Nabi Azad, but then it just died a quiet death. Um, Dinesh Thakur has been active uh, in uh, RTI uh, questioning and has asked for some kind of, uh, he's asked for answers on why no action has been taken, but basically it's been suppressed. So Indian pharma companies, as well as the Indian government, believe, or they say, they've given statements that you and your book are just out to damage the Indian pharmaceutical industry because we are far more competitive and we can produce better drugs at low costs, which the Americans can't. And uh, I'll follow up with the question of what the government is planning for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just the beginning of my trip, so it will be interesting to see. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you can't, you can't find anything wrong if you don't look for it. And, uh, you know, here you have a company, Rambaxi, which pleaded guilty to seven felonies there is crystal clear documentation that not only were their drugs for the US bad, but their drugs for India were worse. And yet in that entire time, as you say, you know, no drugs were ever recalled, no plants here were ever raided, there was really never any inquiry. And yet when I met with GN Singh while I was reporting here, you know, he said to me, uh, you know, there is absolutely no nexus between the industry and the regulators. Um, so there's, you know, there's nothing to see here. There's, there's no problem. Uh, and he said, but on the other hand, uh, whistleblower information is mostly always fake. So I think he has a strong viewpoint. Um, the Indian government has said, um, in response to your book. They've said a brief perusal of the book reveals that there is no correlating data available in the representing story and statements have been made based on assumptions. So I guess they really didn't read the back of the book and the notes where everything is documented. In fact, on when I was doing my research, I found that on the FDA website, they have huge amount of details on the Indian raids, Indian inspections. Yeah and the reports that have come out. So it is all documented. They're not assumptions at all. Yes. It's um, very carefully, uh, yes. I mean, absolutely. It is possible that in making those claims about the book that they overlooked the 40 pages of endnotes, the 20,000 pages of FDA documents. Um, uh, but, but the US FDA, as you say, has carefully documented extensive findings of fraud in Indian drug plants that are still ongoing. So basically what they've said is that the book is based on interviews and um, basically not taking it seriously, which is very worrying for Indian citizens who are still faced with the fact that we have 
a drug controller who's not taking his job seriously, and we are still consuming adulterated drugs to this day.